Hey, hey, what's going on? This is Rob, and welcome to the Baseball, Softball, Pacific Rim Podcast. In today's episode, we have a very special guest. She is a softball player that has many accomplishments. A Polynesian softball player who is a Division I national champion. She's also an international professional softball player, and she has represented United States of America Team USA national team on the softball team uh, as a pitcher. And we are thrilled to have her. Her story is very unique, and she's going to share that with you during our conversation. So I am extremely glad, delighted, and excited for you to hear the story of Kehlani Ricketts. I also like her because my daughter's name is Kehlani too. So here you go, Kehlani Ricketts. This is going to be exciting. Hello. Hey there. Hi. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Again, thank you for doing this. I think this is going to be fun. Uh, not just for me, but for everybody that's going to be listening. So I appreciate you. Yeah, no problem. I mean, whenever I could get the word out with softball, with anything, I mean, it's great. Yeah. So let's. We're gonna have to start from the beginning. Um, I I I'd, I'd love to jump from where you're at, but I think telling the story from when you started and all of that, and because I'm sure there's some really cool, you know, journeys along the way that you could share. Um, we could probably start from the beginning. Like, did you grow up with uh, parents that uh, wanted you to play a bunch of different sports, or was it just softball? Yeah, so I'm actually the youngest of four children, and I grew up in the Bay Area. My mom and my dad, they're both active in sports and stuff, and so they pretty much threw us all in sports. We played we were always busy playing sports, whether it was volleyball, basketball, swimming, softball. But, you know, softball was just kind of the thing that stuck with our family, especially with, mm. so there's, we have three girls and then we have one boy. And so my, the oldest sister, she was really sticking with softball and she got into a travel ball team. And so then me and my other sister, we ended up following her footsteps a bit. We all ended up playing, all four of us played basketball through high school. We all went to Archbishop Mitty High School, which was pretty prestigious in sports. And we all played basketball there. My brother played football. And then us three girls, we ended up getting a scholarship to play softball, Division One. My oldest sister went to the University of Oklahoma. She was an All-American there. And then my other mm-hmm. sister went to the University of Hawaii. She help lead them to their first women's college world series she was also an all-american there she was a pitcher as well and then my brother went on to the air force academy and he played football there in scholarship so to say we grew up in a pretty athletic family and so me being the youngest i followed my oldest sister's footsteps again and i played at the university of oklahoma wow wow that's a pretty Awesome. Um, Star study <laughs> home there. That's great. Yeah. So that was kind of the beginning. We were all pretty much into sports, pretty athletic. And yeah, I guess it helped a bit that we helped our parents a bit that we we're all able to get scholarships to yeah. come on and get academics that way. But yeah. And then I went on to Oklahoma and I was. Four times All American there. We won a national championship my senior year, and I went on to go play professional softball in both Japan and for the. We have the professional league here in the United States. So, I just got done playing in Japan. I was there for about five seasons, and I'm still playing for my team here called the U Triple S A Pride. We're with the National Pro Fast Pitch league here in america and i am also a member of the usa team so i Mm. was a member of that when i was in college and then took a break from that and so i was just on the team this past year we just qualified for the olympics in 2020 so that's kind of like the most exciting thing in my life right now (laughs) yeah 
yeah, qualifying for the Olympics. That was really cool. So yeah, that's man. Right okay, so there's a there's a ton there from playing D1 um Oklahoma and then your sister obviously playing there would like to l- hear a little bit about that and then you played pro in J- Japan those guys are pretty gnarly with their softball aren't they yeah playing over there was it was amazing it's crazy because I never thought I'd see myself going to go live in Asia at all and yeah I signed up and I'm like <laughs> okay maybe I'll do this for a season and then I just kept going back it, just the support they have with our with the sport of softball, I mean, something that you don't see in any other country. And just, just their yeah. professional league is so well run. And, you know, just the culture is so welcoming. And it's really cool to see how much they love softball and love baseball and mm-hmm. really appreciate it. So it's really exciting that softball and baseball are back in for 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. So that'll be really exciting to be at. If I make and, it to 2020, that is. <laughs> For our sport, it will be exciting. <laughs> yeah. So for the um, – we'll, we'll back up to high school. You uh, mm-hmm. – did you play varsity as a um, freshman, sophomore? Or did you play with – I mean, I, I guess I was asking if you played with your sisters um, in high school. So my oldest sister, Samantha, she actually is like four years above me. So my ah. freshman year of high school is her freshman year of college. So actually, right. when okay. I came to OU, she was like a, a grad assistant. So I always say she was like my bullpen catcher when I was at OU. She was <laughs> nice. My first two years. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was nice having her around. But I played with my this my sister that's right above me, Stephanie. She was a year older than me, so we were we were okay. both pitchers, and so we were both you know kind of like competing with each other all the time. We played on the same basketball team and played on the same softball team. But me and her actually didn't make varsity. I, her, she didn't make varsity her first two years, and I didn't make it my first year. We, I was on varsity sophomore, junior, senior year. I think because we were in basketball, and basketball always ran pretty late, and so we came late for softball. So, mm. yeah, we, and we kind of just peaked later as softball. I mean, I think nowadays it's kind of harder with recruiting getting so much earlier but we were pretty lucky that recruiting started happening around like junior senior year of high school so that worked out for us got it okay for for the young girls that are looking to take their softball skills to the next level from high school um Mm -hmm. what kind of encouragement would you give them uh early on when you know after eighth grade going into their freshman year like what kind of encouragement would you uh would you give them workouts and uh, mm-hmm. meal plans or what What kind of things would be successful, uh, help them to be successful at that early well, stage because it's a whole different level at college. It definitely is. Um, I would say, you know, to start off with, you know, if, if, if softball really is something you love, you know, just whatever it is that you love, whatever sport it is you're, is you're really passionate about, should really prioritize that one. And that doesn't mean, like, neglect any other sports. But if you yeah. really do love it, that's what's going to help drive you, and that's going to help you you have better work ethic around that. You know, something with softball with me, I love both softball and basketball, but softball is something about the team camaraderie. That's what helps fuel me, and it still is what helps kind of fuel me till, t- till this day. Just something about, like, the teammates being able to have your one specific job but being able to rely on a team at the same time. That's something that has always helped me in my work ethic. And you know, I think something that really has helped me is when I was in high school, I think what kind of made me take it to the next level was I believe I had coaches that believed in me. And that was the other part. Mm. I was really blessed with having coaches being able to like give me belief in myself. And that's what made me feel that, you know, if I really did put the work ethic in, then I could be, one of the best things in the country and you know I had coaches telling me that you know like if you work the hardest that you possibly can then you could be one of the best and so you know I took that to heart and I started going out every day to practice and just telling myself like I'm going to outwork anyone in the country right now and like I'm going to outwork everyone wow. you know, not just for myself but like for my teammates so I felt like I really owed that to my team and so you know I like looking back you know hearing the coaches saying that that's 
something that I feel like every every athlete really needs to hear, just belief from their coaches. That's really going to help fuel their work ethic. So, yeah. I mean, wow. That's good. Yeah, because in high school you can lose um, – because it's, it's like high school is exciting. It's like a whole new world. You have – New classes are excited about the potential of sports, and then you have the mm-hmm. social aspect that's really, really like super fun. So it can can be a little distracting, but I think I like what you said when you when you prioritize, you choose something you really like, and you prioritize that. Um, that mm-hmm. The effort of focusing on that's going to be key, especially in high school. So that's good. Yeah, and I know, like looking back, I I have I did have a social life in high school, but I feel like it didn't take so much over my life because, you know, I knew what my goals were. I, like, I knew what my priorities were. And so, you know, I, it was okay if I was missing one or two dances or if I wasn't going mm. to however many birthday parties, you know, because I knew it was eventually going to pay off. And when I did have free time, I was able to go to certain events and stuff. But, you know, it, it was it's okay sacrificing those yeah. social events if you know what you want and you know when it gets to and especially when you're on a softball team and any kind of team I just I feel like I'm like I'm always around my friends so I'm always surrounded by my friends with my teammates and so I'm not really out on much (laughs) yeah that's a a, that's a a tweetable it's okay to miss a dance (laughs) yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I think I tweeted this one quote that always goes around social media it's like Sorry, I can't. I have softball because every softball oh, girl nice. has about one to leave. But, you know, it's okay. Nice. Yeah, it's okay. That's good. I think that's important for these guys to hear because there might be that duality where, oh, are they going to hate me if I don't go? And no, but I think you said something really profound there is when you went to softball, you were with your friends anyways. So it's, yeah, yeah they were there. Like, and we always think that it's like the end of the world if we miss this one birthday party or one dance, but then, I mean, I'm looking down the road, like, 10 years from now, no one's going to remember that you missed that one dance or yeah. whatever it was. <laughs> like, your crush isn't going to remember. <laughs> but, yeah, good, so good, good how, point. It works that way. <laughs> what were the challenges at a Division One big-time school? Because the challenges there are different from high school. So what kind of things that you, did you face there that you were able to conquer and – um, you know, create a, a standard of best, best practice for yourself? Um, the biggest thing, and, you know, you'd probably hear any college athlete tell you this, but time management, that's definitely the most oh, overwhelming wow. thing. Yeah, and so they, th- one thing that we kind of always say at OU is, you know, you have the three S's. So you have school, you have softball, and you have your social life. And Two of those things will take a priority, and one of them ha- kind of has to take the back seat. And so, you know, some people it'll be social life and softball, and then school ends up taking the back seat, or it'll be school and softball, and then social life has to take back seat. So, you know, it's really up to you as a athlete if you really want to be putting that student before the athlete, like making that the priority and making making sure that like your social life doesn't take over your life because I know in college, Mm. you know, that was probably the hardest thing my freshman year learning. You know, you're always around friends. You have so much more freedom. Your, your parents aren't around Mm. and being able to be a time manage getting your work done before your social life. And, oh, and then, oh, there's another S actually sleep. (laughs) That was one (laughs) thing my freshman year. I was trying to get so many S's in and, getting the obviously we had to go to softball we had to go to classes but then we were trying to cram in our social life too and our sleep was on the back turner but yeah I think I as I was going through my years at at college I could have looking back I could have made it so much more easier if I just learned how to like manage my time earlier on in college being able to get my homework done first so I could be able to you know get my sleep in but yeah, yeah definitely man. time management. <laughs> man, that's that's huge. Um, didn't expect that one, so that's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. It, it makes sense, and I think one of the challenges that a lot of islanders face when they leave the island to come to college is the time management because they're like, 
oh, you know, hallelujah, this party here, friends here. Mm-hmm. It's like, and just like you the know, schedule. Especially, so at, at Oklahoma, we have like tutor schedules, and then we also have like a learning specialist who's someone that kind of like helps set up our week for us. So just being able to be on a schedule and always remembering like where you have to be at a certain time and stuff, that's one of the things that was hard to because so, sometimes you'd be like, oh, okay, I'm done with practice. Okay, I could relax a bit. Like, oh, no, I had tutoring. You just have to mm. remember you have to get to every different, like, appointment that you need to get to. Yeah, so having a schedule is good, a tangible yeah, schedule that you can refer to and to see. <laughs> yeah. Um, switching gears from uh, into softball, did you have any kind of, uh, like, specific routines or specific workouts that that you – spent most of the time doing, like, um, to help with your, your game? Um, growing up, when I was in high school, I just, I mean, I played basketball in the off season, and I feel like that's probably my biggest advice to any young athlete growing up in middle school and high school is just being able to stay as athletic as possible because that really pays off in the future. Just mm. being able to, like, play as many sports because the more athletic you are, the more it really helps keep you uh, away from those injuries when you start getting older. I, a lot of times when people start getting so one sport dimensional, they you start mm. to see that kind of, like, wear on them when they get to college and then to the professional league. And I know, you know, the girls that I'm playing with at the top level on USA and in the professional league, a lot of them, majority of them, played multiple sports growing up. And I think that's just the biggest thing for young athletes, just being able to be as athletic as you could be. And it's not only that, but, you know, say some girls, they end up getting burnt out in the sport. And so, you know, they end up going and playing a different sport in college than they thought they were going to play. So yeah. it's not only just being athletic at that as well. But on top of that, right now, now that I've kind of like switched gears and I'm, I'm only softball, um, I do a lot of weightlifting and then a lot of sprint work mm. too and agility and just mobility stuff as well. So just because I am weightlifting a lot. But, mm. Yeah. What was it like um, in the, the playoffs? And you guys ended up winning the championship, right, in college? Yeah, we did my senior year. What was that like, like leading up to it? And I'm sure it was nerve-wracking, but also exciting. But it must have been really hard to get to that game in that position. Oh, yeah. it was. So my junior year, actually, we made it to the national championship game. And we lost. It's a The national championship game is a series of three games. So it's best two out of three. We ended up losing mm. in game three of the national championship game. No. And, you know, that was. It was heartbreaking. It was so heartbreaking because we thought we had the momentum and then we just kind of, like, lost it. And so that was total heartbreaking because we had never been in a position, none of us, none of the girls on that team had ever been in that position. And so going into senior year, we, my senior year, we had a lot of girls coming back from that previous team. And we were just kind of on a mission the entire year. <laughs> yeah. We, I think we were – they, we were arguably one of the best, most successful teams in college softball that year. And, you know, like we, I think just from day one all the way through, we just, we are, we knew what our goal was and we just told ourselves that nothing was going to get in the way. And so, you know, it was really special to be able to like kind of have a sense of relief and just being able to see like our, all of our goals and all of our hard work kind of paid off. So it was really exciting to be able to go through that. And, you know, like we had kind of, so my senior year, that was our third year, our third trip to the world series in four years. Mm. And so we kind of had that experience behind us. And so, and then we were in the national championship the year before. And so like we had kind of been there. And so we weren't too nervous about everything going on. And so it was just kind of like being able to get it done, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, I guess it does sound like it was a relief because uh, I'm sure it was as memorable as always. That's amazing. Yeah, it was definitely a great way to end my college yeah. career. 
Right, right. And then you transition into pro ball. So did you get the offer to do pro ball uh, immediately after, or did you have options to look here and then also up there? Or what were your options like after you graduated? So the MTF, they have a draft every spring, so it's going on during softball season. And so I was mm. drafted from the Pride during that spring. Um, I think I was fourth overall pick. And mm. so I I went to – I didn't end up signing with them until midsummer, so I kind of joined them late. But I also – I had the opportunity to sign with Japan the next day after my college career is over. The, our Jap- mm. Japanese team was actually at our game in Oklahoma City, and they met with me the next day, and I signed with them. <laughs> but that was really cool. Did you know there were – did you uh, know there were they, they were looking – I, I knew they were interested. I'm not sure if I knew they were at the game or not. I don't think I knew they were at the game, actually. But wow. Yeah, that was, it, I mean, and that just goes to show, like, how 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 much they take softball seriously. It's real, like, it's cool for, like, a theme, like a women's professional league to have yep. someone from Japan being able to come watch at our sport here in America. So I signed with that team. That was uh, that's Toyota Industries. We we're called Shoki, and it's it's nice that the professional leagues don't really overlap. So I think I'd miss a few games when I would be in Japan, coming over to the pro league here in America. So the Japan league, it's in the spring and in the fall, and then the American pro league, the MPF, is only in the summertime, and so they're all about three month windows at a time. And so this past summer, actually, since I was with USA, I was kind of going back and forth, so I wasn't at my MPF games as much. And then this summer, we have a lot more training camps with USA, so I probably won't be there as much either. But it's nice that, that my the pro league is being really – they're working a lot with USA because they obviously, you know, they want our sport to grow. And so they're yeah. willing to let, let us go train with USA this summer and the next summer. So for the league in Japan, were you one of uh, uh, a couple? What were their international um, uh, slots like? Are they only allowed two international players and then the rest Japanese, or was it pretty open? Yeah, so there's they have like a top league and a bottom league. And so in our top league, there's about 12 teams, and only a few, few of the teams actually have foreigners. So I want to say there's uh-huh. about six teams that have foreigners. And you're only allowed two foreigners per team. So mm. my first four years, my catcher, she was also an American, Kayla Castillo. Kayla she played for Arizona State. And then my my last season, I had an outfielder, Kirstie Merritt. She's also on the USA team with me. And so they're, pretty much all of the foreigners are American, except there's one team they have two Australians. Uh, Kai mm. Carnaby and Stacey Porter. They also they both played at University of Hawaii as my sister actually. But nice. yeah, the rest of us are Americans. But, so it's really competitive. <laughs> it is. And what one thing that made it really interesting I thought was the pitchers were only allowed to pitch ninety eight innings the entire season. And so wow. the season was only about twenty two games though, so it was about 11, 11 half games. And so it was always kind of interesting towards the end because we would, like, the foreigners would start running out of innings when we needed to mm-hmm. win games in order to make championships. So I always thought that made it pretty interesting. But I heard they're going away with that role this year. So I was like, oh, wow, the one year that I leave. Because I was always <laughs> one of the pitchers running out of innings. And so I'm like, wow, if I was there, I'd be pitching every game. But, yeah, I thought it was pretty cool that they kind of have the restrictions on foreigners, I thought, just because right. I think it helps. Obviously, it's like the Japanese league, so it really helps their like their athletes grow a lot more. And I thought it made it pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, so what's it like here at the Pro League here in the States? Um, the Pro League here has been pretty different every year that I've been in the league. How many teams? So, uh Let's see. This she, this upcoming season is going to be U Triple S A Pride, Chicago Bandits, the Shugong Eagles. The I'll get into the to the foreign teams after. Um, I want to say the there's Columbus. foreign teams in the USA League. Y- yeah, so that just 
started actually. I want to say there's going to be about six or seven wow. teams this year. But in years past, we had only had about four, four to six teams. And so I think two years ago, they introduced the Chinese team. It was a team made up of all Chinese players, pretty much mm. from their national team program, I'm assuming. And so then mm-hmm. last year, they there's two teams with majority Chinese players. And then from that, I think there's another team that had majority Australian players. And then this year, there's going to be a, a Canada team with majority Canadian teams or Canadian players. So it's a little interesting. It's definitely not the way other professional leagues are run around. Yeah. Yeah, but, (laughs) I mean, it's definitely bringing in, like, the – it's helping grow the sport, grow grow the sport international. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, definitely. It's very different, but it's interesting to see. (laughs) Yeah, I think it – it, it, more opportunity because there's a lot of those like the uh, like Chinese. There's a lot of Chinese here that love the sport too. So now they can see yeah. almost like their home team while they're here. Uh, very interesting. That's good. It just means more opportunity for the girls. You know. Yeah. And um, for it's all, funny because uh, I yeah. didn't. I had never. I didn't think it was really doing much when I like when I was actually in the league playing. But then last summer when I went with the USA team, we were playing these teams in the in the world championships or in the world cup and you know we were Mm. facing australia and they're using you know all the rowing gear that were sponsored by in the league or stuff like that i'm like wow that really like because you don't realize how much something like merchandise kind of gives you a different kind of edge and stuff so yeah yeah but yeah you could definitely see the teams because china the chinese team they're probably the their first year they entered the league, they were in last place. I think they might have only won two games all season, but they looked completely different from the first day of season to the last day of season. Like, they were making awesome. a lot better contact and fielding the ball so much better. So, yeah, it seems like it's making it better for those teams in the league coming in. That's great. So you mentioned the USA national team. Um, when did mm-hmm. you participate with them? Did you do it during college or after college? Yeah, so I was in it my junior, what was it, my my sophomore and junior year of college, I was on the USA team. And I just recently joined again last year when we went to world championships to qualify for the Olympics. And then I just tried out for it a couple weeks ago, and I'll be on the team again for 2019. Nice. Is it an invite only? Yeah, so we have trials. They have trials for the team every single year. And I think last year there was an open tryout, but then there's also invites that were sent out. And so this year there's only about 40 girls invited. And Mm. actually there's another Simone girl that's going to be on the team this year, Deja Mulla. So she's a catcher at – Arizona. She did really good at the trial. I really enjoyed throwing her, and I know a lot of the pitchers did. And so she's a young face. She's a young catcher in, in college, which you really don't see often in the national team program. So right. yeah, keep an eye out for her. She's oh, that's young exciting. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow. But so the you have to try out, and once you make the team, you're only on the team uh, for a year, and then you got to try out again. Yeah, and so actually the next tryout, for the Olympic tryout, will be this yeah. Oct- October of, of 2019. So Nice. Yeah, where where do you guys hold the tryout? Season. When is it, or where is it? Yeah, where where do the tryouts typically um, are held the at? The past few years they've been in Clearwater, Florida. But uh, they when I was on the team, it was in Southern California at the – what is that? The Olympic Training Center. It used to be there, but then when they took softball mm. out of the Olympics a couple of years ago, they tore down the softball fields there, and so they just, oh, just no been like migrating. <laughs> yeah, so we it was in Oklahoma City one year, but it's been in Florida the past three years. Oh man, bummer. Okay, well, when mm-hmm. it's in California, we'll definitely come by and watch. <laughs> we'll <laughs> okay. try to. 
gather a yeah, delegate I, I know of they Polynesians. Had in, they had it in Irvine, and we used to, we had the World Cup in Irvine this past year at Bill Barber Park, and I loved mm. it there. It was really cool since so many of us are from California. Yeah. So, it was cool to have all our family out there, but I think it's going to be in Georgia this year, so we're a little sad about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Georgia is something else. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit hotter in the summer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what are your plans for the future? So obviously shooting for the Olympics. Um, are you going to continue to play the, the both pros, uh, Japan and uh, here in America? And how much more longer do you think you'll play? That's a good question. Um, you know, the past couple of years that I've been out of college, I feel like it's been so hard for me to really plan more than a year in advance. Because I just wow. never know what I'm doing the next year. But, I mean, I would like to play softball as long as possible. But, you know, I just you just never know what's going to – what you can't really plan out life as an athlete. I feel like you just yeah. you don't know how your yeah. body's going to be. You don't know what's going to be in the future. But, I mean, as of right now, softball, it's in for 2020. So I would like to play. That's my goal is to play in 2020. Yeah. And then I'm not going to be – I'm not going back to Japan this year. So I would like to stay in the mainland, just like in the United States, as long as I can right now. I just got married last year, and so my husband, he's in the awesome. Army. He's going to be getting out. And so, you know, we're trying to get settled in our married life, but I'm still trying to, you know, get, like, go to get my dreams. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, we're trying to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, well, exciting time in your life with everything that's going on and in the new family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely super exciting. Yeah, thank you. But I think definitely yeah. in the future, I would like to do something softball related. I mean, I would love to get back somehow, whether it's coaching or whatever it is. Yeah. I know, uh, so me and my sisters, we actually went back to, you know, the whole softball bowl thing they do yep. every year with football. Yep. So they yep. did a softball thing. My I don't, my aunt was somehow involved with it. So she got me and my sisters to come out, and we and there's also a baseball Sweet. clinic at the same time. Mm -hmm. That was back in 2011. Mm -hmm. So we, me and my sisters, we held, like, a softball clinic along with the ba alongside the baseball clinic. And I thought that was awesome. That was really cool to be able to give back to the culture and be able to, you know, it was only one week, but it was cool to be able to see the joy that the girls got from school from softball and being able to learn so much in that one week. And, you know, I went back again the next year with he was, my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time. And so I went back again and did a little clinic and mm. stuff. And, you know, I think that's something I am hoping I could go back again this Christmas. I'm trying to go back. Hopefully I can go with a few of the Samoa and Oklahoma girls that are, are on the team right yep. now, Jocelyn Allo and Fale of, the, of you. So we're trying to plan that trip out right now. But, yeah, I feel like that's something I could definitely see myself hopefully giving back a little by little every chance I get. Yeah, I remember when I was growing up on the islands, um, I think it might have been my sophomore year at Samoana High School, and then um, this guy from America who was a scout for mm -hmm. the Angels, uh, his name was Wally. He came down, and then he talked to our school, and, you know, taught us, like, some did clinics and stuff. But that was the biggest thing for us growing up. It was like, wow, this guy's from the Angels or this guy's from America. And he came to, you know, so we talked about it forever. So I'm, I'm, I know for a fact that when you guys went down, um, they talked about it forever and they aspired about it, joked about it, like, yeah, I'm going to be that person and I'm going to get off the island because this is such a tiny island. And to, to have, like, successful people come down – it, yeah, you'll mm -hmm. never forget it. So what you guys did was, man, huge, absolutely, no, yeah, I'm sure so life-changing. Yeah, and I I mean, I know especially, like, you hear about the football players all the time when they come down, like Troy Paul Malo or when yeah. June Jones used to have his camp. You know, like, you hear so much about the football players, and you even see it, like, driving around the island when they're wearing, like, the, the different uniforms that those yeah. players <laughs> give them and, like, the helmets or whatever. 
And so, you know, it's cool for the male athletes because then you end up seeing them make it off the island and seeing them have some kind of success story with that. So just being able to give that to female athletes, you know, just to show them that, like, there are Polynesian girls that make it in yeah. their sport and be able to get an education out of it. So I know that I saw there is two – softball players one she used to go to, I don't know what their names are but I saw they just went back and did a clinic I want to say two months ago one was UCLA mm. and I think one goes to New Mexico State so I thought that was really cool just awesome. to be able to like see the sport growing especially with it kind of getting back in the Olympics hopefully it'll be in the Olympics past 2020 but right right awesome right to have role models female athlete role models yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Um, and w- with the Olympics coming up, because the Samoa has a national team and they can qualify for the Olympics. They just have to have a team, and you know mm-hmm. the girls have to be motivated, and they, they'd have to see the model in front of them. And for you guys to do that is the model that they need to see. So that's huge. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that would be very. I would really hope to see that in the future if they could be able to form a national team that would be awesome because man they, have a chance. they totally can <laughs> yeah this, it, this might be crazy but you you'll probably play on the the 2020 uh united states national team and then who knows maybe in 2024 you'll be on the samoa <laughs> national team at the 2024 olympics maybe we'll see <laughs> yeah yeah, whether as a player or a coach or both. I know. <laughs> I hear a lot of Samoan girls nowadays, they always joke that, like, we need to get a national team put together. It's like, you guys would be good if you were able to get a team together. Just yeah, Whether or not right. someone is going to be able to kind of step up and make the team. But I know right now, actually, the way the Olympics is set up, they there's only – one qualifier out of the whole Asianic division, and they're including Oceanic division in that. And so I think, oh, like, man. yeah, and so it makes it even harder to qualify. I think there's right. maybe, like, the the Winter World Championships qualifies. So we since, yep. since we got that bid, we got that underway. And then on top of that, there's two Pan American teams that qualify since it's softball is so big in the Americas. And then yeah. one out of Europe, and then only one out of Asia. And so they're including, like, Australia, New Zealand, like, all those teams down there, they have to qualify through Asia, which has never been the case before. Right. So, and But they all they all play in one tournament? Yeah, I think they play in, like, the Asia qualifier, which is in Australia. I'm not sure when it is. Okay. I want to say in, like, September. Damn. With with all but, the talent right now in in Division One and in Pro for the Polynesians, uh, you guys, if you put a team together, you'll have at least twelve solid, experienced, like top level uh, players, and put them in the national team, and you guys would dominate the Asia American <laughs> uh, qualifiers. Yeah, but we would still have to face Japan and Australia, New Zealand. There's a lot of tough teams throughout the world, but yeah, we would definitely be contenders if someone would get a team together. Yeah, because you guys are all Division One experience, so I, I I would imagine it wouldn't be that tough. <laughs> yeah, there you go. man. But oh, yeah, man. It's, 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 international is definitely it's as big as college softball is. International is such a it's so tough in its own way, I guess. But I mean, there mm. like you still do. There are, are still, like, the countries that are a little bit weaker because they don't have the same strength that we have in America. But, I mean, still being able to, like, play – just that every country kind of has, like, their own different way of playing softball. And so, you know, like, when we're playing college softball, mm. everyone's playing American softball. And just and it's so much harder to be able to adapt to the different countries' way of playing, I guess. But Interesting. Yeah, That's really yeah. interesting. Yeah, and especially Japan, just with – Going over to play in Japan, they yeah they have a totally different way of playing, and it's obviously successful for them. They are, I mean, USA and Japan are always the top two teams in the world. So, right, it's, it's very interesting to see their different way of playing. Even in baseball, they're Japan. They they have a pretty good professional baseball team, but they play yeah. such a different game from America. 
Yeah, you're right. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, the style is completely different. Mentality is mm-hmm. different too. Yeah. Boy, that it's would that would be them. awesome though. That would be awesome <laughs> to see a uh, American American or a Samoan flag compete in the Olympics. Oh man. That would I be know. amazing. That would it would be a scary looking team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they'd throw in the haka before the games. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. New Zealand's Man. been doing that, the World Championships. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, actually, you know, there's a video that was going on. So they played Chinese Taipei in World Championships, and so they're doing the haka before the game started. And Chinese Taipei, every girl on their team had dirt behind their back. And as soon as oh. New Zealand got finished, they threw the dirt at them. It was no. crazy. You could probably find the YouTube video, but it's like if you're to type it in. But it was crazy. Yeah. And they, those girls on New Zealand, they did not flinch, and they just started going at them. They just start. They just kept the haka going and going, just slowly. No. Wow. Yeah, it was cool. But it was, and they did it in such a respectful way. Like it was just Chinese Taipei was totally throwing disrespect to them, and they just responded back in the best way they knew how. Yeah. Wow. I definitely have to find that. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Wow. Well, thank you. I definitely appreciate your time. Um, And I know for sure everybody that's going to be listening um, is going to continue to follow you, but just what you've shared, uh, they can embrace that journey from high school, even when you're a little to, you know, to the Olympics. So this is awesome. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on. I'm glad I was able to share a little bit about my life and kind of like my backstory about everything. But yeah, I hope it helps anyone. And if anyone's listening, just feel free to reach out if they have any questions about anything. I'm more than happy yeah, to help. I'm, I'm sure there's not only the, the players, but parents are going to be extremely grateful too uh, to hear your story because, you know, they want to give as many role models to their kids as possible. So this is going to be helpful for them too. And uh, I know I I, uh, say this for everybody that's listening, that we're proud of what you've accomplished and we're going to be proud of everything you do from now on, but also the people that follow in your footsteps. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Cool. All righty. So we'll let you go and uh, we'll be in touch. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye.